Glenn was born and raised in Calcutta, his family fleeing India when he was 11 for the safety of New Zealand. I saw a lot of poverty, a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of abuse handed out, murder even, you know, the partition of India right outside our house, they were murdering each other. That had an impact on, on yeah, you? Yeah, it obviously did and, uh, and how can I make a difference? Average at school, in his own words, he never had a lot of things, never did a lot of things. By his mid-twenties, married with children in a state house in Otara, he was working day and night to pay the bills. Well, I had five jobs to make ends meet. I gave up sport. I gave up living. I just worked. I didn't have a fridge. I had nothing. I had zero. And, uh, yeah, I made the fairly dramatic move to leave. It was in Australia and later London his career in cargo started to take off. If life wasn't so tough, do you think you, you would never have left? Yeah, I, I have often thought about that. Uh, I think eventually I would have left to seek fame and fortune. Part of my arrangement with the Ratu is I can have any five acres I like. Five acres? Yeah, and I've got a surveyor looking. You know, beach and depth of water and everything else. Hey, how are you? And Paul Anker was... Glenn's never forgotten his humble beginnings, though my, how things have changed. Currently, he'd quite like to buy a resort. You've done so much. You want for nothing. A lot of men would just kick back and... and do what? I don't know. Die. As long as I'm fit enough to do something, I just do it, you know. But my mind is always working, like the proverbial duck sailing across the water, looking serene, but the legs are going like hell underneath, you see. <laughs> and you're not ready to hang your hat up yet. That's the thing. I mean, you're oh, good Lord, no. approaching 70. I'm or, I know you're reaching the prime of my sexual life, for God's sake. <laughs> Don't print that. <laughs> His exuberant largesse has ensured he's never short of company. Renowned for his loyalty and love of life, some of the mates he flew into Fiji have been close friends for more than 50 years. And then there are the glamorous personal assistants and other young female companions, an Aussie chef, a South African yacht stewardess, and Olga, she's from Belarus. Owen Glenn's cup really does runneth over. It can be a touchy subject. I, I don't aspire to be a socialite. Or... You say that, yet you have the super yacht, you have... The super yacht is the, the 10 years old. It's probably worth less than three million now. Still, you have a super yacht, you travel the world. I'll tell you what, I'll sell it. That would make me feel a whole lot better. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot, lot of the downers. Well, he hasn't got anything now. He hasn't got jewellery, he hasn't got a car, he hasn't got a yacht. They all feel better about it. You do flaunt your wealth. I do not. A little. I bought this because I, this is where I'm going to point my feet at the sunset. This is just Owen's batch. No, this is Owen's home. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty about I'm having guilty. so much money. But, but you do, you enjoy the fruits of your labours. But why not? You sound very defensive. Have, have you copped well, a lot of flack? Because 90% of the questioning I get is, why are you successful? You don't have any right to be successful. Why are you different to us? Why, are you, why should you have all this and not me? So what am I supposed to say? Because you're no f***ing good. You're lazy, you're a twerp, you're a bad mad ass and you, you live in a welfare society that carries your ass. You want to hear that? That's what I think. Don't print that. <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah. You're, you've got the problem, not me, if you're questioning me. On the personal side, there is no Mrs. Glenn. There has been two of them, but that was years ago. From those relationships, there are six children and nine grandchildren he loves very much. But at 68, he's still waiting to meet that special someone. Glenn, the 
Despite the adventures, despite the fortune, despite the fun, there seems to be a, a sense of longing, a sense of sadness that marriage has never worked out. That yeah, we don't there, have there is. Um, I'd love to share all this with somebody. And uh, um, I've had a couple of ladies in my life that I thought would work out, but for whatever reasons it didn't. You surround yourself with people. You have a bevy of of young beauties often. But they're all friends trail. of mine. They're and friends. My goddaughter, my daughters and their friends. Wow, there's, there's nothing uh, spurious happening here. Are you scared of being lonely? Yeah. You are? The answer was yes. You'd rather? I don't like being lonely. Well, why should I? If I can avoid it. <laughs> There's a celebration in the village this evening, hosted and enjoyed by the island's newest chief. He has big plans for the next two or three years, millions earmarked for philanthropic projects around the world and a couple more big business deals in the offing. He might have the world at his feet, but the billionaire says it's here he's at his happiest. Do you see a day when you will feel your work is done? No. Well, there's the haves and the haves not, you know. I mean, 10, 15 percent of the population of the world live well. 30 percent in abject poverty, so they have meetings and they say, oh, we're going to do all this, this, that, and the other, and they never follow up, never do it but they can find 700 billion to bail out the greedy buggers in Wall Street. <laughs> but I'm not here to crusade the whole world. I'm just doing my bit. And content with that. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm at peace with myself. And any mosquitoes, I swat them. <laughs>